Hi everyone, so today I want to talk about hype versus, uh, versus you know, just letting it happen. And uh, let me write this down. It happened. Now, here's the thing. In It's very easy when you're trying to do something. It's very easy to convince yourself or to, to convince either two ways. Either try to convince yourself that something is right or kind of fake it till you make it. Or if, and, and we see this a lot in businesses, we see this in um, sometimes the media, sometimes even in how we live our lives. And the issue is that we, you know, you want sometimes if you are too calculating, you, you kind of force something instead of letting it happen organically. And I, a part of the problem is, you know, it's kind of like trying to create a, a hit movie, right? Or uh, I think George Lucas um, once said when, when, he, when he was releasing the, the prequels, the Star Wars prequels, you know, he, he was talking about how, you know, he wanted it to be like Titanic, right? Like, let's, and well, he didn't, no, he didn't want it to be like Titanic, but he talked about, uh, because Titanic had just come out in 1997, and it was this huge hit. Like, if you weren't around back then, I don't think you could imagine how big of a hit it was. There's nothing you can compare it to nowadays. You, you really can't. And nobody even remembers it, to be honest with you. I don't think... It, it's not popular, actually. It still isn't, which... It's kind of a hidden gem, I guess. But, but the point is, when George Lucas was releasing um, the prequels, okay, what we now, what we now know as the prequels... Uh, Star Wars Episode 1 th through 3. Um, jo George Lucas, he... Um, let's see if I can draw George Lucas. Uh, George Lucas was talking about how he wanted to create a hit, but, but he knew that he couldn't control it. And so even though you might want something to happen, um, you, you can't control it sometimes. And so... And, and the idea is it's okay to want for something to be a big hit, but unfortunately, you can't always predict it. And so how do you do that? And, and I think the issue is you just don't know. Like sometimes it's not just about you don't know because you can put your best effort and it still just doesn't take off. And so really what it boils down to is when it comes to hype, hype is when you try to make something uh, pop off. You, you try to make it. Um, make it stand out. You make you try to get people excited about something, but that can only take you so far. Like, believe it or not, I mean, obviously, advertisement it does work to some extent, but I don't think you can ever truly create the big phenomenon. Okay, phenomena. That that's the plural. The big phenomena. Oops, phenomena. Okay, you can't really create. Uh, I spelled that wrong. Uh, let's see if we can get that right. The phenom... Nah. Okay, so when you create something, it just kind of happens. And that's how it ba happens best. You know, if some people say that's how love happens. You know, a lot of people, it just feels excited when... Exciting when something happens spontaneously. And when something happens like... Like it almost... It's almost like it was meant to be. And it's not something you can control. And it requires you to let go. It requires you to, um, to kind of... And for some reason, it just feels better that way. And perhaps life is, is built upon that. But life is made up of circumstances that are just outside of our control. And I think part of hype and part of trying to control, we want to control something. We want to make it happen. And a lot of times, the only thing you can do is to kind of just let go and let it happen. You can prepare. You can do everything you can to prepare. But at the end of the day, you're not in control. And so the best way to, to get things, um, to, to make something happen, if you want something amazing to happen, the only thing you can do is prepare. 
But the other thing too you have to do is to stop trying to control it. Stop trying to, like you need that freedom to have true, um, true wonders happen. Because if you don't, you, you might not ever truly have something special happen. That's how special things happen. That's how culture is created. It's not planned. It's something that you have to let go. And this is very difficult because a lot of, you know, economies, a lot of um, companies, a lot of corporations, they, they want to control. It's the opposite. In, in many cases, actually, they, they pride themselves a lot of times saying that, oh, we can make things happen. We can. And the truth is, like, no, you, you don't want that to happen, actually, because the best innovations, the best creations happen in these weird um, in these, in these, I guess, serendipities, moments of serendipity. Serendipity means kind of luck or, or serendipity, right? Serendipitous, that's the adjective. Okay, serendipity, right? And you need kind of that element of luck, that randomness, that the good things that happen, good fortune. And so, so what I'm saying is that in order to create, you have to trust. And, and I think this is a lesson for everybody, for anybody who's in business, anybody who is it, it, just in your own day-to-day -day life. But this is especially a problem with businesses who are trying to create some great, great projects, great, great objects. Um, you know, if you're trying to create computers, you're, um, whatever it is, like... Uh, you, you, you have to let go. You have to um, let things happen organically. Just let it happen and see what comes out. And that's how the best interactions, that's how the best, uh, that's how the best um, sort of, like the hype will happen automatically if you're open-minded and if you, are able to allow it. In other words, just let those moments happen, believe it or not. But because the more you try to control, this is why when you, when you get into a conversation with someone, you don't want to plan the conversation. I mean, you want to have a, a general idea, but the truth is that, um, that spontaneity is what makes the magic. You know, and so many times when, you know, people talk about like dating or whatever it is, and, and they leave out that, that serendipitous moment. You know, they, they leave out, like, you have to let go. Because otherwise, it's too calculating. It's too stiff. And you're not allowing things to happen. You're, you're not allowing the best moments to happen. You cannot plan the best moments. You just can't. You just have to be able to be prepared for when it happens. But you can't plan for it. Does that make sense? And that make, that's pretty challenging because so often, um, I think businesses... They're in, they're in the habit of, of trying to create the story instead of sort of, you know, instead of allowing it to unfold before them. And I think the true, um, the, the true power or, or the true, you know, if you're great, the best thing you can do is prepare and have, you know, the, the, you know prepare. That's absolutely um, true. You know, you want to prepare, you want to have... Um, you know, what, whatever you need to practice, you have to do it. But how it's going to happen, you can predict what you're going to do, but you're not, but you can't control how it happens. And so you don't know if it's going to take off. You don't know. But the only thing you can do is put yourself in the right, in the best position possible, right? And, and sometimes that doesn't always match up with um, what you might think it is. It, a lot of times it's really about um, just doing things uh, to the best of your ability and, and preparing, meaning you make sure that you learn whatever you need to learn or you work hard in whatever you need to work hard in. But the truth is you can't always uh, control what will happen after, right? Or how or what, will, what people will gravitate towards. And so, and the reason why this is so important is because when you, when you want to create a phenomenon, okay, that's the, uh, I'm saying the, the singular version of this. 
Okay, the, when you want to create a phenomenon, you need to let you need to allow for things to you need to allow for people to because because there's so many other things that are happening at the same time that you cannot predict. And so there's no way for you to know how people are going to use your products or what you say or what people will like, you know, and, and, and it, it always happens that people take it in a different direction. And so in a way, you kind of have to just prepare and, and just go with the flow in that sense. So, you know, we're, we're talking about hype versus letting it happen. And a lot of times, you know, one of the problems I see with businesses today and with people is that they try to, you know, they try to say that they, they try to make the story instead of letting the story happen, you know, instead of letting it. And it, what's weird is that by, by forcing your, what you think is the best, you're actually preventing the real, like the real fantastic happening. You're preventing the, the, the ability for that to, to even, for actual hype to come, you know, for actual, for true success and for true glory to happen. You're preventing it from doing that because you're standing in the way. And sometimes the thing is people want to feel like they're in control of their lives. They want to feel like they can control it. And the truth is you want, you, you have to allow, you, the only thing you can control is how prepared you are and, and what you, and what you're doing and making sure that, you know, obviously you're, you're doing whatever you think is, you know, is, is going to be the best. I mean, I, I do believe in planning, I, but, but like I said, you can control what you do, but you can't control how it happens and how it is perceived. And so, you know, I would go so, um, go so far as to say that, that we need to, um, that if, if you want great things to happen, uh, make sure that if you, or I, I guess what you say, if you don't want, you know, to let it, letting, letting go, okay, is, is something that, as weird as it sounds, it requires trust and it requires letting go of power because this is really about power. This is a power struggle that we're talking about because you're ceding power. You're saying, I, you know, control means power. And so really, when you're talking about businesses, they don't want to lose that power. They don't want to be able to say, hey, you know what? I did that. They, they don't want to let go because this, the risk is, of course, that it'll go in a, a direction that you might not want. But the problem is what you want might not be the best way. And so it, in a way, and then not to mention that it also risks that, that someone else might sort of, uh, that it might, that something else might be more popular. That's not you. So, but sometimes it's not even about that though, because when it comes to power, it's, I believe that in order for something to succeed, you kind of have to let it, let it take on its own, um, its own shape. Let it, let what, whatever you're doing, take its own life. You have to give it that freedom. It's, it's kind of like, and this is something that, because if you don't, then I truly believe, and I know this sounds weird, but I truly believe that your company or your whatever you're creating or you will never truly be free. You will not be free and you will never truly be great, as weird as that sounds. It'll always just be hype. It'll be fake. Hype, it'll be fake. Whatever you do is going to be fake. It's not authentic. It never truly achieved greatness, even though it might, you might actually be great, actually. You might even make a lot of money, but it, it was never authentic. It never reached that authenticity. And I think in the end, people will recognize it. They'll feel it. Even they won't, they won't know how, but they'll feel it. And so what, what I'm saying is to, and this is such a challenge because, like I said, it requires you know, and I, like I said, well, um, I, I really believe that a lot of great things come from having that humility 
and being able to, uh, you know, understand that in order for, that sometimes you need to sacrifice a little bit of that control over our lives so that something beautiful can come about and so that success can happen. And so everybody, and in and, and the end, I would argue that you come out on top even more by doing that, you know? And so companies, um, products, people, your life, your study life, this, this encompasses many things because all of that becomes sort of greater, you know, if, or let me put a, a growth chart. All of this becomes greater when, when you are able to, um, when you're able to, you're able to see growth, even more growth, I think, than before, if you allow these phenomenons to happen. And, and in a way, I, I guess what I'm saying is that in order to create great things, it's almost like you have to let go and then, and then it, it, allow it to grow. And then, you know, you can you know, sort of, um, you can grow with it, so to speak, instead of trying to hold something down and let's draw a balloon here. Instead of trying to hold something down or, or whatever it is, like trying to, um, or, or trying to create um, something in life that, that can sort of, that goes beyond what you do. And even though that does happen anyway, it still causes a, um, it, it happens anyway, but, but, you know, when you're too calculating, you, you don't allow for, you, you, you're, you're setting limitations that, uh, that you have, but there, are so much cha- there is so much chaos in this universe that we don't, that, that whatever, even if you do plan it, you're, in effect, you're, you're always destroying more than you are creating. The act of creation is destroyed when you, um, when you don't allow the, the story or the, the um, you know, whatever the project you're working on to, to have its own wings and, and go in its own directions. And, and this really boils down to, uh, it comes, it, we, you know, we circle back to what we originally said about hype and the idea that hype is something that happens when you try to make something and it has its place, right? Because obviously you can technically, um, an advertisement is a form of hype, I guess. You know, you're, you're hyping something up, right? But I'm talking more about how um, in life, you don't want to live in hype. You know, I don't want my life to be an advertisement. An advertisement is by itself fake. Okay, advertisement is not real. Advertisement is fake. It, they're pretending. It's not real success. If somebody somebody could have an ad campaign, that doesn't mean they're successful. That doesn't even mean they've sold anything. All it does, it's just an ad. And I don't want your life to be an ad. I want actual glory, true success. And that means in order for that to happen, you can't fake it, so to speak. You have to let it. And this is where you have to let it happen. You have to let it go. You have to allow for, uh, allow for the process. You have to, first of all, you have to let go of your, let go of your, whatever you think should happen or whatever you think, let go of that. Don't just, whatever you think, don't act on it. And instead, let the process play itself out and organically allow for, you know, whatever ideas come up, go with that. And then uh, over time, according to, again, going back to the chaos, right? Where is the chaos? Oh, I don't know where the chaos is. The, the chaos of life will present you with different scenarios that are relevant today to today. And then you'll be able to decide based on that. And, and the point is that if you pay attention, if you prepare you will, the, the opportunities are going to come up in front of you and then you're going to be able to ride it. And then you will be able to, you know, when people see 
eventually what's going to happen is something really awesome is going to happen, okay? So imagine like a really awesome, either a, a coincidence or something, anything that's exciting. Something is going to happen and then that's when you're going to be able to seize on it and, and then put it together with something else and then something else is going to happen and then all of a sudden you're going to have this, these connections. All of these different connections are going to start happening and what's going to happen is these connections are going to um, create a network and then all of a sudden you've created this masterpiece that is based on and that everyone will be able to see and feel, but, but it won't be planned. And, and that's what's going to embed it into the universe. It will embed it into our psyche and into our entire like, current framework because it's not something that's planned and people know it. It's almost as if people can sense when you've planned it too much, when it's overplanned, but when it's something that just happens and then you've seized upon it and then the people, it becomes the people's idea. You know, it becomes the product of people. And so all of a sudden there's an authenticity to that and it's no longer hype and whatever, you know, music, movie, media, art, product, whatever it is, you know, that all comes together. All of a sudden it becomes like magic and, and people become excited about it and it, it, and it no longer, and then the hype becomes real. They st people start hyping it up, but it becomes an organic sort of hype. And it's not something that you can predict and you can always control. And I think that's what, it, it's weird because, um, you know, that's, it, it's, it's in a way it's kind of, paradoxical because it requires you to let go and and it's hard to let go of that but i think that comes naturally if if as a philosophy if you adopt this philosophy it doesn't have to be a difficult thing to be honest with you i think this is a philosophical issue i think this is something it's an approach and if you approach things this way always there's an honesty it's almost as if life requires a certain level of honesty to operate because if you try to squeeze too much, you try to control too much, it, it just won't happen the same way. You'll never get the same result. There's something magical about something that is done in earnest and with honesty. And, and it's almost as if that there's, I don't know, there's a light at the tunnel. There's something, there's a gift that comes with letting go and allowing sort of the freedom of thought and allowing for... Um, honest exchange and allowing for things to grow organic that somehow it, it it's it's almost as if um, you know it's, it's almost as if that's something that is meant to be that way almost and people have this is why people have always extolled sort of the virtues of you know the, all of the virtues that people talk about right and a lot of them are universal obviously there are different cultures and different ways of looking at it. But, you know, we have a lot of things like love, compassion, and, and sometimes, you know, people use these words and, and, you know, these words are always used all in all kinds of ways, sometimes in different ways. But like, but I'm talking about a true, open, you know, in, in the kind of a virtuous sense of the word. It, um, it, our, um, your approach to things, um, it's no longer hype. It becomes, you can see the success. So you do need to couple this with, um, with hard work and with preparation, which is how you become good at something. And then um, when, you let it, when you let go and you allow for this thing to grow, you know, that's how success and how, um, how you know, great things can happen. So 